thank you for coming today. My name is Phoenix Dalto, and Monday will begin my last week of 13 years in the public school system. When I first heard that I'd had the opportunity to speak here today, I was ecstatic. I knew that this was my chance for me to find my voice in the ever-growing and intensifying discussion surrounding education. So naturally, I took my, the logical first step in preparing for such an important event and procrastinated for three months. When my feeling of panic finally surpassed my desire to sleep, I got to work. I sat down and made a list. I wrote down every flaw in the education system, every time curriculum took precedence over learning, and every way that I felt school had failed me. I ended up with a notebook filled with my complaints. I could have slapped on the title, Public Education, a Story of Policy and Pain, and sent it off to print. But you know what I did instead? I scrapped it. I realized, no matter how much fun it would be, no one would benefit from another 15-minute rant. So rather than adding my voice to the already deafening noise of social criticism, I decided to start a new conversation. Instead of coming here to trumpet all of the whys, all of the reasons that I believe the education system should be reformed, I'm here to ask a question. Why not? Why not do the little things in every classroom that can have a greater impact than any policy change? Why not pause and reflect on how our attitudes towards school can affect our entire learning experience? Why not shift our focus from the institutional side of education to the human side? I believe that there are three everyday practices that can make any class, regardless of grade level or subject, one that will promote both academic and personal growth. My being here, opening a new dialogue and speaking to you about something that I'm passionate about, shows that we're well on our way to accomplishing the first part of my remedy for indifferent learning, communication. Now, I know how much we all love sitting at a desk in silence for eight hours, but just humor me. Talk about the material, talk about life, talk about the weather, just talk. Class discussion is both an effective way of teaching and a way to find a real love for learning. Whether students use talking in class to ask for help understanding the material or just to flirt with the person next to them, everyone has something to gain from a little communication. So teachers, if this is the first time you're hearing a student's voice, then I ask you, why not communicate? Now communication is a solid first step, but the real meat of my methodology for making the classroom more welcoming lies in step two, connection. Connection does not mean teachers trying to act like their students or be relatable. It doesn't mean calling physics lit or saying Mary Antoinette was high key extra. Connection means forming bonds between students and teachers, students and students, and students in the material. Connection means collaboration, mutual understanding, and trust. The classroom can be the most important place in a student's life if they're given the opportunity to build relationships with the people that they spend most of their time with. Having this strong social foundation will make the class undeniably more meaningful for students and teachers alike. And once a connection is made, learning not only comes naturally, but becomes more rewarding and exciting. So, to teachers and students who are struggling in a stagnant, zombified classroom, here's the question. Why not connect? Now, I'm sorry to say that my third and final ingredient in my recipe for the perfect classroom is the most difficult to attain. It's something that we all must work for and struggle to hold on to. But it is also the key to unlocking the power of learning and our greatest weapon in fighting classroom indifference. This last crucial piece of the puzzle is caring. Call it too general, obvious, or cliche but I call it necessary, and I call it scarce. Teachers are not paid to care, and students are practically trained not to care. It is only the few who manage to overcome the all-consuming apathy that settles in our classrooms that are willing and able to revitalize education and make it worthwhile. Whether it means caring about the material or about the students, just care about something other than the clock on the wall. Everything else might open the door to better education. 
but a little caring, will blow out the windows and knock down the walls. If you took the time to listen to this talk, I don't need to ask you. But one more time, why not care? Now, as I wrap up, I feel that I should make two apologies. First, I'll apologize that I've told you all a lot of what to do and very little on how to do it. I'm not an expert in education or psychology or anything. As much as I wish I had the complete how-to for making everyone a lifelong learner, I don't. I must leave it up to you to find your own ways to open up your classroom and better ways to communicate, connect, and care. Secondly, I'll apologize for failing to do what I was asked here to do. I was brought here to give a student's perspective on education. But instead, I tried to give a human one. I hope that if there is anything meaningful to be gained from my talk, is that we can all benefit from a little extra thought when it comes to learning. Thought that can come from asking, why not? I wish you all luck in our changing world of education, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs>